This building stands in the Tuileries Gardens in front of the Musée de Louvre in Paris. It's actually part of the complex where Monet's water lily paintings are housed. And it's a lovely little structure from this viewpoint, relatively simple. But those columns certainly do present a bit of a challenge in a rapid drawing. Just how much detail do we go into and how much time do we spend doing them so they don't look wobbly or like they're going to fall over or a series of badly stacked blocks. So it's a bit of a challenge to begin with. But otherwise, it's a relatively simple structure, although there is a quite distinct perspective angle to worry about. And because it is a relatively simple structure, that can make it even more important that we get the perspective correct because there's less in our scene to visually distract us from any inaccuracies of perspective. So just finishing this, the banding of these first two columns, I was very much aware that I was going to spend a disproportionate amount of time on these two columns and then I would hopefully make up time in the rest of the drawing. It was mostly a relatively brisk drawing to do. However, it did actually take me in the end 20 minutes to complete, but that was because by the time I got to the end, I was quite happy just to sit there and spend more time increasing the shade, the, the darkness of those two trees in front, because I felt that was in the end very important to the overall visual effect of the drawing. So. I decided that I'd just take that time and not worry about it too much. But the rest, the rest of the drawing took me about 12 minutes, uh, maybe a fraction more to do with those two columns in real time. So it was, it was relatively quick. Uh, you are watching me draw this in double time. Now with these doors, I wanted to draw them also with a, a light gestural touch because I, I didn't want them to look too dominant. I wanted them to sit back from the columns and to sit back from the pediment on top. Now this tree, while it very conveniently covers the columns on the right hand side, the disruption it makes to the facade does make it actually quite tricky to position the right hand details and particularly the right hand corner of the building. It is interesting how it's a, a two-edged sword. It both simplifies and complicates what we have to do. And so now I'm positioning the pyramid, which again, the, the pediment, not the pyramid, that sits on top, which again was complicated by the tree because it just made it harder to work out exactly how far along the front I wanted it to come. And I decide just to continue with the very gestural representation of the sculpture that's within the pediment. It's a relatively low relief sculpture compared to some of the, the more heroic figures that we see fully rounded in architectural pediments. So I think I'll just finish this left-hand side and then I can get concentrating on the right hand side and the rest of the building. I need to establish the perspective angle at the base of the building as well. So a little bit of shadow there, but generally I'm not doing too much with the shade and shadow of the building. It's in some ways going to be a relatively stark drawing with the building in the sunlight, the light sandstone color with the full sun on it and then the darkness of both the local color of the tree and also the shade and shadow of the tree. So I'm trying to establish now where my shapes are with this big disruptive blob in the middle that stops me getting lines of sight quite as easily as I'm used to doing. And then also trying to work out where this tree goes. Now, I'm obviously not being overly fussed with accuracy of the tree itself per se. But what I do want to do is get a sense of the type of tree it is, of the way the branching happens, of the silhouette and of the scale of the foliage even in some ways. So even though it's a relatively 
quick drawing. I'm still wanting to do that. I'm drawing this with a 0 0.2 millimeter pen, but you'll notice in a moment when I go to do the foliage on the tree, I do switch to a 0 0.3 millimeter pen. I find that this lets me get a nice darker value through hatching faster because the thicker line obviously puts more ink on the paper and I can cover more of the paper with less strokes which speeds up the process and I think actually also looks better as well. I find whenever I draw with ink it's good to have at least three pens on hand. I've got the pen that I intend to do most of the drawing with and then I've got a pen that I can go heavier with if I want to get some darker values. Or perhaps something in the very foreground I want to have drawn with a, with a more dramatic, more visually prominent feel. And then a lighter pen for things that are further back in the distance or if there's some detail where I particularly want to draw it finer and I think that a lighter line won't disturb the overall um, visual uniformity of the of the drawing. It, it can be great uh, having a lighter pen or so for just simply going back into the distance and drawing those furthest things so that that so that they don't get entangled with the line work of closer objects and also it mimics the effect of distance where we see things less clearly. So having done a probably overly quick gestural drawing, a gestural representation of those clipped trees on the left hand side. I've now just switched to my 0 0.3 millimeter pen and I'm working on these trees. Now, I, the way I've decided to do it in the way that I thought would be the fastest way to do it, because I am still conscious of the time with this, is to do the darkest areas first, the areas where, where there is shade on the tree from where the sun is and the way the vertical sun coming down doesn't reach the underneath parts of the branches of the foliage on the branches. So I'm trying to get some representation of that and having done that I'm now working at just generally increasing the overall value with lots of hatching that goes over the top of the hatching I've already done. So that, that first hatching becomes darker again. This helps me to get, I think, a more, interest, a more interesting variation of values in this tree. And I do want to take it fairly dark. It's still looking a bit, if you like, streaky. So I do intend to do a bit more on it, but I also want to define this tree on the right hand side because I think that's part of it. it, it that other one just look, looks a bit lonely, a bit stuck there by itself otherwise. So now I work on the extreme right hand tree and particularly where it connects with this tree. And now a bit more work on that first one. This really did take quite a bit of time at the end, but I think it really was worth it. And if there isn't time to do this in the quick drawing with the rest of the scene, then this can be something that's just done in, in 10 minutes at a later stage, watching TV or something. And a little bit of shade on this right hand side of the building which is just not quite getting the sunlight reaching it and then I don't know whether I should have bothered with this bit of shadow from the pillars and I do another hint of shadow there and I do some horizontal hatch lines so they don't get lost in the vertical lines of the building but otherwise that's pretty much it Look, this photo will be on my channel community page. I hope you have a go drawing it. It's a great subject for one of these daily exercises. But look, whether you draw this one or not, or a different one, or something totally different, again, whatever you draw, make sure you have fun. And I'll see you next time.
Bye.